all this morning. A couple of announcements today. Uh, Spanish services, of course, are back up. And our next Spanish service is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, right here in the church. So if you'd like to help out with coffee hour or with driving or just come to church, that would be great. It's a load of fun. Uh, I see that some people, uh, last couple weeks, have put their uh, votes in for what things we're going to do with cast the net. That's great. So there's still time to do that. Last bulletin board before you uh, before the back door of the church hall. Just look at the list. Say, oh, we can do three and four or five and ten or whatever. Write it down, put it in, and then we're going to tally those, and then we're going to try a couple of things. We'll see what happens. There is a new coffee hour list up beside, beside my office. Uh, sign up for coffee hour, please. We don't have anybody signed up from now until the end of October, so uh, which is okay for me. I have coffee at home. But anyway, if you'd like to sign up, that would be great. If you, if you haven't signed up before and are like, well, I don't know what to do, or I don't know how difficult it is, we have people who can train you. It's no problem at all. They'll work alongside you. So if you want to, please look at that and consider doing that. Our Bible study starts up tomorrow morning. Our next Bible study at 10 a.m. Uh, in the church hall. And we're looking at a different time for Bible study because I know so many people say to me, Reverend Ted, I really want to come to Bible study. I really want to come. But Monday morning at 10 is just not a good time for me. So now you get to choose another time. So what time is convenient for you? So um, if you complain to me that 10 o'clock on Monday morning is not good, now is your opportunity. Yeah, you're not here or not. You're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Anyway, so, uh, but we're going to see if we can find a new time. If not, we'll still continue with Monday morning. And the food bank is always looking for donations for families in our township. Uh, some of the things that they need, especially are like toothpaste, uh, personal hygiene products, shampoo, and of course monetary donations are always acceptable. Uh, if you want to leave a donation, there is a shopping cart outside my office, you can leave it there. Or uh, Nancy's not here today, but Nancy and Paul are with the food bank and they'll be more than happy to help you out. So um, just consider that the next time you're shopping, pick up one or two extra things. You can put it there, we'll make sure they get to the food bank uh, in time to be dis distributed that week. I know there's one more announcement. Uh, Don, you want to come on up? It's not actually an announcement. It's not an announcement. A presentation. Even better. <laughs> and I'm very happy to be here this morning to, on half of the hard-working ACW members, present Ted with a check for $1,000 to St. Paul's. Oh, so I, I know cash always. Cash is and thank you to all of the hard-working ACW ladies and all the people that support us. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Don. That's great. Oh. Uh, well, on behalf of the church, thank you. We really appreciate it. Any more announcements? If I'm missing anything? Yes, Kim. Uh-oh. Okay, so... Oh, yes, go ahead. I have had an idea for many months that I keep thinking one of these days I will uh, get Ted to sort of flesh out and, and prep the whole idea, and I never get around oh, to yes. it. Yeah. And this morning, because I came, the bulletin was laying, I thought, oh my gosh, that was the, this reminds me that I keep meeting to announce an idea, and if people are interested, they can do this, and if not, like, it will be an idea that gets forgotten. But because for many years, you know, the art work on the front of the bulletin has always been just like the generic clip art, and sometimes, um, anyway, I won't say anything about it, but <laughs> um, I have the idea that, you know, there are many people who might, much like with Bible study, get something sort of fulfilling out of doing some artwork, and um, they could look ahead at the lectionary and do anything from something sort of abstract or, or realistic, it could be a kid doing it, it could be somebody without a whole lot of talent but just enjoys it. Like, Why do you look at me when you say that? Why? <laughs> Why is it you say no talent and you look great at me? I'm not explaining this though because I have no intention of making the announcement. I saw this because what I was really going to do was say, oh Ted, sometime you should make a sign up sheet with the readings for like a couple months ahead. And anybody who thinks, like, gosh, oh, that's something I'd like to do. The only criteria is you probably have to have it at least by the Tuesday of the week, maybe, so you could reproduce it. And or send them a digital copy would be better. And then it can reproduce in black and white. And some people who are a little bit artistic might find that fulfilling or fun. And I think everybody else in the church would like sometimes, if somebody has submitted one, to think, oh, look at that, that's so nice, look at this. And so people don't look at it and say, I wonder what this has to do with anything. Honestly, for that matter. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I had that idea, yeah. if, do you, like, this I did. I, I didn't even say this to you. 
so someone asked me, why is the front of the bulletin blank? And I thought, someone's actually looking at the bulletin. That's nice. So this is not, this is not so during the sermon you can do something else. This is, that's not what it's for. You, no, it's not a great idea. It's so you can take it home and you can do your own picture of what you want to remind you of what the gospel is. So anyway, that's why it's blank today. Yes, that's why it's blank today. So. <laughs> which is which is also a valid uh, point that it might have happened, but it actually that's not true. Usually that would be the that would be the case. So anyway, so thank you, dear. I appreciate it. So again, not during the sermon, but some other time you can put your own picture. However, you could if I mean nobody goes where it's like, but you could do this idea also for the fall of having. A sign-up sheet with the lectionary. I think that's a great idea. Go home, see if there's a week they're like, oh, I feel inspired about that one, do some little thing, and you know, that'd be good. Okay. Okay. That'd be fun to do. That's why I think you don't have to have much talent. Anyway, and if nobody does it, just go back to your clipboard. Okay, I'm done now. Are you sure? <laughs> you're not done. I know you're not done. <laughs> I think I'm going to edit this out of the video because this might take a long time. So, okay, all right. Okay, well, thanks. I appreciate it. Any other announcements? Oh, yes, I was got one. Um, so our harvest dinner yeah. will be October 19th. Um, I just won't be here next Sunday, so um, there will be a sign-up list. We'll pack out what the menu is going to be and I'll solicit a few people, but. Just put that on your calendars. We're going to have empty pockets again playing. That's been confirmed. Oh, good. Um, and it will be beef. Beef. We're not going to say what kind of it is. Beef. Not a hamburger. We promise that. But it will be some kind of gross beef. Um, we just have to price them out to find something. So if you can put that on your calendars, October 19th, it's the Saturday after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, great. That's great. Okay. Any other other announcements? No? Okay. There's no time for the service today. We're going to go in for coffee hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, that's just the, no. um, Our presidential hymn is number nine in your blue hymn books. Today I Awake, number nine.
and Book of Alternative Services, page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, and a selection of verses, 1, 2, 8, 9, and 22, and 23. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fall, fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause, and despoils the life of those who despoil them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> so this morning is Psalm 125, and you can find it on page 884 in your green service books. Psalm 125 on page 884 
Only five verses, so I think we can probably handle saying it all together. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem, so does the Lord stand round about his people from this time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers, but peace be upon Israel. Lord, surround your people with your presence. Do not let us stretch out our hands to do evil deeds or be destroyed by the snares of the enemy. For bring us to share the land prepared for the saints in light, where you live and reign, God, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. And now the second. The second reading is taken from James chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. Well, to the one who is poor, you say, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme, blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty, for judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. And yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is good of that? So by faith itself, if it has no works, it is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's name is number 430 in your blue hymn books. Will you come and follow me? We'll sing the first three verses before the gospel and four to five afterwards in number 430.
according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She began, he, she begged him to cast a demon out of her daughter, and he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dog under the table eats the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. And so she went home and found the child lying in the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went to the way of Sidon, towards the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven. He sighed and said to him, Ephrata, which is be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered him not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered everyone not to do that, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He even has done everything well, he even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today. And I think it's, you know, one of those things where I think sometimes we take things for granted. But the truth is that the people of Jesus' time, and we are not any dissimilar, in that sometimes we have to be told things that we think should be obvious, right? Don't kill someone. That seems obvious, right? Yet we have to name it, right? We, we don't have a law against it because no one does it. It's because people do it and we need some deterrent. In the time of Jesus, it's the same sort of thing, is that sometimes we think, well, we don't need to say these things, but constantly Jesus says them because sometimes we forget, or we willfully don't do it because it's not convenient for us. And that's part of the problem that we have as just human beings, not as Christians, because we're part of society, but that's kind of what happens. So we need rules, and we need to set those rules out. We need to talk about them, because otherwise... We'd all just do whatever we want and be total chaos, like more chaos than we have now. The two hymns that we sang already today are two of my favorites from the Blue Hymn Book. Um, not surprisingly, they're also relatively new. Um, they're from the Iona Celtic community in Scotland. And I think they're really nice because it reminds us of our calling. It reminds us of who we are, right? The first one talks about today I awake. Today I awake, and what is alive inside of me is my love for God. It wakes me up. It gives me energy. These are the things that we need to remember. These are the things that we need to do. This last one, you come and follow me. I love it because for five verses, the questions are asked. God asks us, will you come and follow me? Will you treat everyone the same? If I give you the power, will you heal people? Will you take those who are disadvantaged in society and lift them up? Will you do all of these things? And the last verse is, this is why I'm asking you to do this, because you need to echo my name. You need to be my representative here. In this reading from his gospel reading, Jesus does what he's not supposed to do. He does it all the time, but in this one he does it in a healing time. And he says, I'm going to take this woman who has come to me but is a Gentile, and I'm first going to dismiss her, which he does. 
And then she comes back at him and says, no, but even though I'm a Gentile, I still have faith in you. I still believe that you can do this. And right away, he says, you're right, and your daughter is healed. And the man comes and he, he heals the man as well of being uh, mute and deaf. And Jesus does this in stark contrast to what was supposed to happen, which is to send the woman away with nothing because she was not worthy of the healing power of God. And so Jesus bought into those societal norms, even for that moment. And then he realized what he had done. And I think it's an example to us as to us breaking societal norms that we think are okay because they advantage us. It's good for us, so we decide to follow it. But when it's disadvantageous to us, we want it to change. And that's not what God calls us to do. God calls us to be warriors of justice and equality. Tells us that inequality is not what goes on. It's not something we should support, and we should actively fight against it, no matter what society says. The church has a long history, both of good and ill, doing those things which society has either demanded or has contracted to do, which is normal. Sometimes we have been on the wrong side of history when it comes to justice and equality. But Jesus gives us an example of how to change that of how to switch sides, of how to be those who are in God's way and not in the way of society. We are constantly asked the question by Jesus, will you actually follow me? Will you follow me if it's not to your advantage? Will you do what I command you to do if it's inconvenient? If it takes you away from something else? It might even cost you friends. It might cost you some standing. But will you follow me? In Proverbs, writer of Proverbs talks about it's better to follow God than to be rich. It's better to have a good name than to be someone who has a lot of stuff. Is it worth it for us to be associated with a movement that seeks justice and equality if it costs us some of our comfort, some of our friends, some of our standing? Would we rather have the name of those who follow Jesus or the name of those who do what's best for them in society. Too often it's more convenient to take society's side. Now I'm not saying everything in society should be thrown away, it's not what I'm saying. But some of it does. We need to move on and move beyond. Even in my, although I think it's old, relatively short lifetime, I've seen society change in a lot of incredibly positive ways. Not always, sometimes the pendulum swings back. But at the forefront of that have been faithful Christians who say, this is not what should happen, and we will now fight for what is right. Oftentimes they've been in the vast minority, and they've lost friends, they've lost standing in their community. Some have lost their jobs or their livelihoods because of it. But because of their faithfulness, because they say this is the right thing to do, they have continued because they've been called by God. How have we been called to do the exact same thing? Doesn't mean we look for things that will purposely alienate people, but how do we continue a conversation in which we say everyone is worthy of God's love, no matter your background or how you look or whatever? And how do we convince others that that is true? We do it by example, we do it by adv advocating for others, and we do it by leading society in that way. <clears throat> when we hear misinformation or something that is simply not true, we need to correct it and say, that's not what happens. That's not what is true. It might be difficult because it might be a friend of ours or even a relative who says it and they firmly believe it. But we must correct them because that's exactly what Jesus does. His society would have said at the time, the Pharisees would have said, don't even talk to this woman because she's a Gentile. You're not allowed to do that. And he said, for a second, I agreed with society, but then I realized that wasn't right. And I made it right by example and by talking about it. And that's what we need to do. There are more than enough times in our life, in our daily life, in our weekly life, in which we hear things that are totally not equal to the gospel. 
things that are totally not acceptable to Jesus. And sometimes, I do this too, sometimes we kind of let it go. But we need to stop doing that and we need to correct it. <coughs> and say, no, this is not right. Everyone deserves these basic things. Everyone deserves to eat. Everyone deserves housing. Everyone deserves help if they need it. And if we can provide that for them, if we can help them, then aren't we doing what Jesus asked us to do? Aren't we saying, yes, we will come and follow you and do that? It might not be easy, it might not be convenient, it might not even be popular. But we are called in a very fundamental way as Christians to follow not ourselves or society, but to follow the example of Christ. And so let's do that. Let's be nourished by the gospel. Let's be nourished by scripture. And as we see those places where we can advocate for those for justice and equality, let's do that. Let's use whatever power we have, whatever influence we happen to have, and say to our Lord and Savior, yes, I will follow you. Yes, I will do those things that you ask me to do. And by doing that, I echo your love in the world and your love for others. Amen. Hunter? So a couple weeks ago, uh, I played a tune at the Cambridge Street United Church in, in Lindsay. Um, it's a guy that my mom worked with and asked me to come back each year and, and play for their ministry of music. And so, you know, I worked on it. It's uh, I'll Fly Away is the name of the tune. And then I, I had seen this video that my mom sent me of this guy who's an incredibly talented pianist playing it, doing things that I, if I, with one hand, that if I played for years with two hands, I still couldn't do. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself to do something similar, try my best. Uh, and so my mom asked me, because I was home this weekend, if I'd come play it here, and, and she's not, she had thought maybe I'd play it next week, but she's not going to be here, she's going on a trip, I don't know if you, uh, if you guys have heard about that, she's going to Spain apparently. <laughs> Which she's excited, maybe not so excited about, anyway, the point being, she's not going to be here next week, wanted me to play it this week, so I'm going to share it with you.
out. <laughs> Our service continues on page 189 in your green service books with the Apostles' Creed. Will the congregation please stand? In your green service books, page 189. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in his spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Please turn with me to page 113 in your green service books. Page number four, the prayers of the people. Page 113. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for all who confess the name of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for those whose lives are bound in mutual love, and for those who live in celibacy, be their joy and their strength. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all in danger, for those who are far from home, for prisoners, exiles, victims of oppression, grant them your salvation. O oh, Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who are facing trials and difficulties, and for those who are sick, and those who are dying. Today we pray for Lily, Tom, Joe, Carol, Joan, Kayla, Bill, Jessica, Kenny, Gary, Brian, Jack, Emily, Scott, Marianne, Ab, Ruth, Marilyn, Shirley, Kim, Angie, Jeff, for Tony and his family, pray for Chuck, all those living in long-term care facilities, people of the Ukraine, and refugees from around the world. In our anchor insight for prayer, we pray for the Church of the Promise of Myanmar. Show them your kindness and mercy. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for one another. May we always be united in service and love. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray to be forgiven our sins and set free from all hardship, distress, want, war, and injustice. Lord, hear and have mercy. May we discover new and just ways of sharing the goods of the earth struggling against exploitation, greed, or lack of concern. May we all live by the abundance of your mercies and find joy together. Lord, hear and have mercy. And may we be strengthened by our communion with all of Christ's saints. Lord, hear and have mercy. We continue on page 191 with the confession and absolution. Page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this holy table. Let us now confess our sins, confident in our Lord's eternal forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now stand in the presence of our Lord as we exchange the peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Prof. Tori Hinn is in your blue hymn books, number 482. Come and journey with the Savior, number 482. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom, and through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them, and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And we continue on page 211. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, page 212, fractional sentence number two. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before the altar rail to receive Holy Communion. If you wish a gluten free wafer or your individual cup, either for tension or for drinking, please tell me at the altar rail.
continues on page 214 in your Green Book of Alternative Services. Will the congregation please stand in prayer? Father, your word and sacrament give us food and life. May we who have shared in holy things bear fruit to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And glory to God, whose power is working in us, and to do it more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Jesus Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God was passed all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. You know, each Sunday I'm reminded of the incredible talent we have in our congregation in many different ways. We saw it today with, with Hunter, and, and I really appreciate that. And so what Kim said I think is really great. So if you feel like you would like to draw something for the front of the bulletin, I can provide you with a list of readings for the next month or so, uh, and you can choose from that. I would do it myself, but stick figures are never that popular, so... Um, no, that should be okay. It oh, should be, geez, like, no, people just think they enjoy it as a reflection on a reading. It shouldn't be like a talent. <laughs> <laughs> you should do it. And you set a good example. Who thinks Ted should do it? Oh, no. You can probably draw as well as you I draw as well as I sing. That's the problem. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it would be hard to tell where he ends and I begin. That's what I thought. All right. I shouldn't say anything. Uh, recessional hymn number 59 in your blue hymn books. Jesus calls us here to meet in number 59.